Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello friends, welcome back to the lecture series on Introduction to Science Fiction Studies. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss a very strange topic that you might not have come across before. The topic today we are going to discuss is Science Fiction Poetry and Plays. The first thing that comes to our mind, how is this science fiction, the field which is mostly dominated by science and technology, can remotely or have a possibility be to be related with something called poetry and plays because this is completely devoted to this permutation and combination of the use of language in our day-to-day -day life and it also have poetic devices literary devices all of these things are so much a part of poetry and plays they have characters they have music they have rhythm this is core literature we can say that this is core literature and art how can something so artistic be related to science and technology these two fields are like diverse domains two extreme points two extreme sides of the same point if this corner is science and technology then supposedly the entire uh, you have to come across the entire screen and come to this extreme point which will be arts how can these two points on the screen meet but even if these two points are there on the screen which is separated by the diagonal even then there is a point where they meet and we will have a look at that intersection in this particular lecture. We will begin with science fiction poetry. To understand poetry, we need not do anything but remember the first songs of lullabies uh, of our mother. Our mother used to sing us lullabies, our parents, our grandparents, whoever took care of us as children. They sang to us when we were, uh, you know, infants. We need not understand the uh, meaning of those words. We need not understand what they actually implied. All we needed was the rhythm, the music that was inherently present in those lullabies. So poetry has been a part and parcel of our life right from the very birth. Let me tell you, when literature was first composed, it was not in the form of prose but in the form of poetry this is the first form of literature that was ever composed by human beings it was not prose it was not fiction it was not drama it was poetry people started rhyming words it started with rhyming of words but poetry nowadays as we understand it is mostly written in blank verse which means there will be no rhyming of words at the end of the line but there will be internal rhymes that is there will be some kind of rhymes within the structure of the poetry but it will not be at the end of every sentence or every line there will be multiple uh, rhetorical and prosodic devices if you want to know more about rhetoric and prosody you can just go and google it it is very easy to find out it is actually um, the word denotes all the literary devices simile metaphor 
synecdoche, metonymy, alliteration, assonance, all these things come under the umbrella term of rhetoric. And when you go to prosody, it studies the rhythm or rhyme of the language that the poetry is composed in. So everything should be there. Uh, only the thing is in modern poetry, we don't have end rhymes. End rhyme, the word end rhyme means that the rhyming at the end of a word. Suppose the sentence, suppose there is a sentence like tiger, tiger, burning bright. Actually, it's a very famous poem. Bright is the last word of the sentence in the forest of the night. Then again, night is the last word of the other sentence. In this way, we find that there are end rhymes. In modern poetry, this end rhyme concept is almost non-existent. Instead, we have blank verses. So science fiction poetry being one of the most modern genres of poetry, you will find there are mostly blank verses. Sometimes there are end rhymes and you'll find it more uh, fascinating. We will also go through some of the poems of science fiction in this lecture. You'll find it a pleasant read. So first things first. What is science fiction poetry? A genre that combines elements of science fiction with poetic expression. So poetic expression is that usage of rhetorical devices, of prosody and the entire genre of speculative fiction and the sub-genre of scientific fiction. Those things, those elements of science, computer, AI, all of these come together with poetic sensibilities, with poetic forms right so brief history of science fiction poetry and its evolution as a literary form once you understand the brief history of scientific uh, science fiction poetry you will also get to know uh, how did the form evolve for this you will be uh, reading some of the famous works getting to know about some of the famous works of science fiction poetry in a short while Overview of science fiction poetry differs from tra traditional science fiction prose. When you read the science fiction poems that we have kept for you in this particular presentation, you will understand how it is different from science fiction prose. That is the stories that you have been reading so far, the novels that you have been studying so far. Uh, for example, you have studied Aldous Huxley's uh, brave new world you have studied dr jekyll and uh, mr hyde you have also studied the time machine all of these are possible works all of these are prosaic works they are written in prose not in poetry so we will get to understand what does that mean now we will be discussing about science fiction poetry in details imagery and vision first we will try to know what are the imageries and visions that are applied in science fiction poetry? Use of vivid and imaginative language to portray futuristic or otherworldly settings. Poetry as simple as the previous kind of genre, but only the difference is this kind of uh, themes that uh, develop in science fiction poetry are always related to a future kind of setting. Exploration of science and technology of course, in the future setting that we have, we will be exploring multiple ways of uh, the world order or the possibilities of the future with respect to the development or advancement in science fiction. The most important advancement that we had made so far as human beings are computers and artificial intelligence. So nowadays we can imagine the major theme of science fiction poetry will be computers and artificial intelligence. Incorporation of scientific concepts, technology, and futuristic theme. Futuristic theme means uh, the themes that can be of uh, importance in future, right? Sense of wonder, eliciting awe and fascination with the unknown through poetic language. This awe and fascination is an integral part of a concept called estrangement. We have discussed estrangement previously in some other lectures as well. Science fiction does that very effectively. If a person is telling 
uh, as a story about a land rover or a vehicle in a different planet we will not feel any kind of connection with that we will only consider it the the story with awe a w e that is wonder something that keeps us uh, very much interested we are so much uh, spell bound we cannot say anything we are just experiencing the wonder so that is all so all and fascination we are fascinated by that story because it does not seem earthly or it does not uh, fit the human existence that kind of story when it comes to science fiction it is all the way true all the science fiction works create that kind of atmosphere create that kind of reality where aliens are invading earth we are traveling through space and time this kind of situation when it comes to poetry we call it science fiction poetry next these are all separate points unique fashion of speculative themes and creative imagery in poetic form the science fiction poetry handbook this is a handbook it is not a book which is published by any publisher let me tell you uh, the science fiction handbook is actually a part of the science fiction poetry association they have uh, made this handbook uh, it is mostly written by suzette hedden elgin she is herself a science fiction poetry author or poet she lays down her understanding about science fiction poetry in this three different points a science fiction poem must be about a reality that is in some way different from the existing reality why because the reality we are living in it is as common and mundane as every day whatever reality we talk about in poems they are covered by modernist and postmodernist writers authors truth and post truth writers and authors what science fiction writers and authors does is that they take this form of existing reality they change it to uh, let's say a parallel timeline reality okay a reality something like we have in brave new world of aldous huxley something a reality we have in 1984 a reality we can have in the handmaid's tale right so all these are uh, parallel realities created by the author so any poem which is based on these kind of realities we consider it as a speculative or science fiction poem it must contain some elements of science as a part of its focus so whenever there is an element of science in this particular a uh, parallel reality parallel universe or a uh, imaginative timeline in a counterfactual reality we have also used this word counterfactual counterfactual uh, we have discussed already that whenever there is a fact there is a counterfact that this is not a fact uh, we know this as a fact but there is another counter another kind of opinion that says this fact can be questioned can be addressed from a different point of reference and then it can be considered a counterfactual opinion or reality so this science element should be there in this particular uh, domain and only then we can call it science fiction poetry it must contain some element of narrative some story element so the poetry that we are going to write shouldn't be just out of the blue it must have a plot it must have a story because unlike modern condition or in the post modern condition we have poetry related to themes there is no plot really there is only themes the uh, subjects are there the visuals are there the ideas are there but it is surrounding a particular theme all the ideas present are revolving around this theme the word choices are according to the theme the expressions the alliterations the rhetoric and prosody matches with the theme but in modern poetry we always do not have a story but in science fiction poetry as suzette hayden elgin expresses there must be 
at least some plot element, some relation to science, and some reality which is not apparent, which is not our reality, some kind of a speculative reality. This is an association that is presently working Science Fiction and Fantasy Poetry Association, SFPA. It was founded in America in 1978. Poetry pertaining to the genres of science fiction, fantasy and or horror. This is a particular magazine. You can easily find their website. You will find that they publish anthologies. Anthology means a collection of poetry or uh, stories. So uh, the website publishes anthology containing this kind of poetry. Poetry pertaining to science fiction, pertaining to fantasy, related to horror fiction. So all these things are covered in this particular science fiction and fantasy poetry anthologies. They have also introduced the Rizzling Awards for year's best speculative poems in two length categories. So there is a short poem category, there is a long poem category. This is the Rizzling Award. The Dwarf Stars Award, another award given by the same society for year's best very short speculative poem. So that means this speculative poem will be only three or four lines. And it will have a plot, it will have a theme, and it will also have science, it will also have parallel realities or uh, realities other than whatever there is in the earth. Can you imagine a small poem, maybe four to five lines, maximum six lines, which contains all these elements? So that poetry is given the Dwarf Stars Award. Since 2013, the SFPA has additionally administered the Elgin Awards for Best Full-Length Speculative Poetry Collection and Best Speculative Chapbook. So remember, we were talking about Suzette Hayden Elgin over here. She is the uh, editor and writer of this book, Science Fiction Poetry Handbook. I am telling you, this is not a book which is a published volume kind of thing. It is this book which, which she is every time enhancing with the collection of all the science fiction poetry that is uh, submitted and published via this particular association, Science Fiction and Fantasy Poetry Association. And Elgin Awards, Suzette Hayden Elgin is uh, that person in whose honor this award is being given. Now we come to a very interesting part, a list of science fiction poets and poetry. In this particular um, slide, we are going to study or we are going to have a look at the poets really. Before this, you might be thinking that it is not possible. How come science fiction be um, gelled with um, poetry? But when I give you the examples of real life poets and their poetry, this idea of science fiction coming in terms with poetry will be more uh, firmly established in your mind. First of all, Ray Bradbury. I'm sure I, I have taken the name of Bradbury a lot of times. So Ray Bradbury, they have not seen the stars. It is a contemplative poem about the exploration of space and human curiosity. So this is one of the poems. Uh, one thing we must be very sure of that science fiction poets and their poetry is not easily available on the internet because this is a very recent genre so the books are a little bit pricey it is available only through purchasing but research papers research articles are available on these poems and poetry so if you want any uh, question to be answered you can just go to google scholar and look for the research papers. I have given some links of the research papers at the end of this course where I will be sharing the reference points with you. If you have any queries regarding these poems or these authors, you can just go there in Google Scholar and look them up. Sonia Taffy, The Boatman's Cure, a haunting poem exploring mythology and the afterlife. So it is also a part of science fiction poetry which is considering a reality which is not ours. Matlaki Huatl's gift, 
an evocative piece inspired by the Aztec goddess and cosmic famous. So Aztec goddess is a kind of goddess of the Aztec civilization. There, this is the particular goddess, Matlakiwatl. She inspires many uh, things and gives gifts. This is again a kind of make-believe situation, a speculative form. Ursula K. Le Guin, we have discussed Ursula K. Le Guin's uh, works before, The Left Hand of Darkness and other uh, associated works. Her contribution is eponymous when it comes to science fiction and uh, literature. She has written a very powerful poem called The Dry Land about environmental degradation and the consequences of human actions. The Space Crone, a speculative poem presenting an elderly woman's journey through the cosmos. So, uh, Ursula K. Le Guin is not only talking about the powerful poem uh, of environmental degradation, but she is also contemplating the situation of the old population. How many of us really think of the old population once we start writing literature? We start with young people so that they can make mistakes and literature will grow. But however, if a person as old as the space crone, that is the old lady, uh, a crone is an old lady with a hunchback who is crooked, who is not able to walk properly. So that crone is uh, uh, journeying through the cosmos and what are her adventures? That is a poem about it. Now, we have Christina Singh. Astro Poetry, a collection of space-themed poetry that explores cosmic wonders and the unknown. Jeffrey A. Landis, Christmas on Mars, a festive science fiction poem envisioning Christmas celebrations on the red planet. So this is again a futuristic kind of setting where people have gone to Mars and they are celebrating Christmas over there because there is no snowfall over there christmas is kind of a different so reality is different environment is different presentation is different it is truly a science fiction poem jane yolen einstein's boy a poignant poem reflecting on the relationship between albert einstein and his son welcome to a mars colony a thought provoking piece exploring the experiences of colonizing mars Every time we think about moving to a, uh, another planet, searching for favorable conditions for the people who are living on this planet, we think of Mars. But Mars is of course it, not, it is not a planet where life on earth can sustain. So, uh, but yet Mars is always there, there in our mind. Mars has a huge impact. Because it is the closest planet, it is the red planet. We think that we share so many things with Mars except for life forms. Greg Beatty, a story illustrated with wounded birds. It is a, a poem weaving elements of fantasy and science fiction, exploring the human desire for flight. Remember, we in our, one of our lectures, we were discussing human uh, humans desire to fly and therefore they have designed or thought of flying machines Leonardo da Vinci we have Jules Verne who was talking about balloons and flying to Africa so all these desires come together in this poem which is a story illustrated with wounded birds now let us actually go through some of the science fiction poems so that we understand the genre properly Edwin Morgan. I have taken Edwin Morgan, three poems of Edwin Morgan to understand what it is like to read science fiction poems. The first word is a computer's Christmas card. I have not included it in this particular slide because it reads like this. Jolly, merry, um, molly, Jerry, Holy, Mary, all these things. So the computer keeps on making permutations and combinations.
of all these letters mostly relating to Mary, Jolly, Holy and keeps repeating this permutation and combinations to form a Christmas card. So it's very fascinating once you go and look into this thing you will actually find a printed kind of thing which is um, shown in the uh, dissertation or in the book where the computer writes its first Christmas card because it knows what Christmas is that is again a very disturbing fact. Now the second poem that I have taken over here okay let me tell you again another poem uh, which is completely based on computer codes you will come across another poem where he writes actually uh, four uh, columns and uh, four columns and four rows of computer codes which are written via uh, alphabets alphanumeric characters and he goes and urges the reader to decode that through computer technology to the understanding of computer and then you will find that there is a poem inside it so he is actually blending mediums in order to create the poetry that he is uh, voting for source of a module this module is actually the command module let me tell you what's a command module the command module of Apollo uh, 1 or 2 uh, command module is the place which actually controls the entire aircraft uh, the entire spacecraft if it is a rocket it controls the entire spacecraft so if the module started having thoughts what it would think this is the uh, entire gist of this poem we are going to read it in a, a jiffy it is black so there is that dust my ladder is light what are my men no move yon flag which voice comes down white house thanks all command module man not is kangaroo hop around i think moon dance or white bird is good oxygen i heard an end i think how men go the talks come down the ladder i shake to leave that bright space dark i see is my men last men are that first that moon is here they have some dust is home they know blue earth i think i lived i see it is that command my men go back i leave that here it is bright so the last line and the first line see a similarity between these two lines it is black so it is bright so it is a journey of a spacecraft from earth to the moon the spacecraft the command module is also watching the astronauts climbing down the ladder and landing on the surface of the moon after the astronauts have land they are able to see that they are doing a sort of dance which does not have much impact of gravity so the command module thinks them to be dancing like kangaroos because kangaroos hop uh, or jump very high it is black thoughts of a module it is black so there is that dust my ladder is light so the first thing that it talks about is the blackness when it leaves the earth the entire space in front of it is black there is that dust my ladder is light so now they have reached the surface of the moon and the moon has a kind of dust which is settling around the spacecraft my ladder is light what are my men the men are going down the ladder 
because the ladder is also not very heavy on moon uh, because the moon's gravity is very less. No, move yon flag. The flag that uh, um, the people are carrying, it is not moving around very fast because there is also very less atmosphere on moon. Which voice comes down? White House, thanks all. So the White House is calling the people on moon and thanking them for taking this mission ahead and landing on moon successfully. So if you read the poem in its entirety, you will find a kind of idea that a person who has very limited understanding and very limited language faculty is actually writing the poem. Maybe the person has a lot of reflections, realizations, but that person does not understand it. The understanding is very low. Again, the person does not have enough language to express whatever the problems he is having understanding or whatever he is observing. He does not have the language faculty. And we slowly understand that it is not a person, but it is a command module. The desk on which all the switches are there, all the wires are plugged to it. It is the central control system. That is the command module. Instamatic the moon, February 1973. Instamatic is a camera. It is actually the name of a model of a camera which was produced or uh, made by Kodak. I'm sure you have heard Kodak is a company. They made this camera instamatic. At the edge of the Sea of Serenity, this is actually a crater on the moon. It is called the Sea of Serenity, where the great dust rises into foothills of the Taurus Mountains, a confrontation takes place. An unmanned eight-wheeled steam pram, Lunocore 2, sophistically clumsy as an emmet velocipede, has stopped its trundle faced by a large, hard, blank slab-like stone. Busily, it winks and scans the monolith, registering back to Taz, an impossible smoothness. What crater could eject this unpitted steel that stands marking nothing? Too much simplicity is a headache for lunocodes, and the moon rover has focused in its frenzy for data on a spider web of shadows and scratches at the base of the slab, which imagination might just read in ventris mood as K space B R I query space K query. So this is the language in which the computer is registering the data that the Lunocode 2, Lunocode 2 is a small robot kind of instrument. which is collecting data on the surface of the moon. While roaming around on the surface of the moon, it suddenly comes across a monolith. Monolith is a kind of a stone, a very uh, big kind of stone, which has a very smooth surface. And it cannot understand how that monolith came to be on the surface of the moon. This is a reference. Let me tell you those who have missed that part of the lecture or just for your reiteration, for your recapitulation. This is a reference to Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick's movie 2001. A Space Odyssey. A Space Odyssey 2001. It, Stanley Kubrick made this movie along with Arthur C. Clarke. We have discussed Clarke on multiple occasions. Arthur C. Clarke wrote a story called The Sentinel. Based on that story, Stanley Kubrick 
made this uh, movie called 2001 a space odyssey while making the movie of course stanley kubrick called uh, arthur c clark and both of them sat together and wrote the screenplay so in that movie you have the mentioning of a monolith a monolith is a rectangular slab kind of thing with a very smooth surface it is staying there for thousands of years just waiting and watching and uh, preparing to send a signal out somewhere and we also come to know that if you are around that monolith then your time will be different the space will bend the time will bend all of these things are going to happen so this lunokhod 2 it is a kind of uh, again a space pram which is moving around and collecting data sophisticated clumsy as an emmet velocipede velocipede is uh, going somewhere with speed has stopped its trundle faced by a large hard blank slab like stone so this is the lunokhod meeting the monolith the monolith is there on the surface of the moon it is changing the time it is changing the space and this particular robot has for the first time seen that monolith and the expectations it has the data it is collecting all of these things are sent through this ventris mode as k space bri query space k query this is the kind of data this is the coding of the data that the luno code is set sending to the base this is a longer poem that is why i have uh, given the title in this side section particle poem by edwin morgan particle we know right all the all the matter that we see in front of us for example this pen that i have in my hand it is made of a particular um substance that is called plastic or fiber if you see plastic or fiber can be made from various elements put together it has carbon it has a little bit of iron it has other substances all those things there is it goes in to make this particular pen we can break all of them down to elements right like carbon if we have carbon then we can have the atoms of carbon in the atoms of carbon there is nucleus of the carbon in the nucleus you have positive charge proton the neutral charge neutron and around that nucleus you will have the negative charge of electron so when you break it down to that nuclear reality everything is proton neutron and electron so particle poem three particles lived in mystical union they made knife fork and spoon and earth sea and sky they made animal vegetable and mineral and faith hope and charity they made stop caution go and hickory dickory dock they made yoke white and shell and hook line and sinker they made pounds shillings and pence and goneril regan and cordelia they made shadrak meshak and abdengo and game set and match a wandering particle captured one of them and the two that were left made day and night and left and right and right and wrong and black and white and off and on but things were never quite the same and two will always yearn for three they are after you or me this is a very fantastic poem firstly he was talking about the nucleus of an atom and around that nucleus there is this electron revolving around the nucleus this is the negative charge and we have the positive charge over here along with neutrons so around the nucleus the electron keeps on moving continuously so these are the three particles which lived happily together and they form all of these things see they form the elements uh, the utensils that we use in everyday life 
they form the environment around us they form the food that we eat they form the emotions that we feel of course it is an exaggeration of that idea they form the human mind its uh, um, rationalizations they form also the non essential the idiotic things they form the uh, eggs and ways hook line and sinker are fishing equipments so in one hand they are the creators on one hand they also make the instruments of destruction they make money see pounds shillings and pence they also make literature like creating the characters of conneril regan and cordelia these three characters are from king lear written by william shakespeare so this poem goes on like this if you just want to have a read an explanation you can go ahead read it see the words try to find the words uh, in a dictionary which the words you don't know the google it you will find there is a deeper layer to the poem that is the spiritual connection of everything we will talk about metaphors allegories in science fiction in the advanced studies of science fiction course in here we are just going to acquaint ourselves with the um, possibilities or the current situation of science fiction right moving on to the plays it is also called a science fiction theater a genre that combines elements of science fiction with the dramatic form of storytelling characteristics of science fiction drama including futuristic settings of course as we find in science fiction poetry speculative technology and exploring of ethical dilemmas first science fiction play ever written was posle million godina actually the pronunciation is posle million godina after millions of years by serbian playwright poet and politician dragutin ilich this particular c is pronounced as uh, the sound ch 2014 Science Fest LA the Los Angeles Science Fiction One Act Play Festival this is the first time there it was a festival organized just to stage the plays which had the themes of science fiction in it previously there was no such association no such staging only very recently can you see this is 2013 only 10 years back there was this association they staged the science fiction plays for the first time in the entire world history cyborgfic is actually the name of the website where you you just google cyborgfic you will see that this is an association this is a company which is mostly devoted to the staging of science fiction plays a london based theater company specializing in science fiction theater and greek theater so they are actually trying to blend the ancient the classical with the latest and the futuristic a very fine kind of blending its name combines cyber and orphic blending the ancient with the futuristic the artistic director is christos kalo junior is a greek british writer academic and theater maker and co-artist director is andriana damuzi is a classicist dramaturge and theater scholar with a phd on lost greek plays by euripides if you are not familiar with the name of euripides you can just google the three maestros of greek tragedy of greek tragedy you can easily get these three names aeschylus Sophocles and Euripides these three people were very famous during their time that is in the 5th or 6th century BC that time they there was this play contest organized in the european societies especially in greek and rome these three people 
won uh, those competitions in a row like Roger Federer winning Wimbledon in a row that kind of thing they were winning these uh, uh, prizes the olive branches and all the um, privileges along with uh, the playwright writers award or uh, a year after year right so this cyborphic website is promoting both the things and they are combining also the ancient along with the futuristic now we will go and have a look at some famous science fiction plays R U R that is one of the most famous and influential science fiction plays written by Karel Chapek that is the pronunciation again Rosum's Universal Robots let me tell you the term robot for the first time was used in this play not in Asimov not in any fiction but the term robot came into existence thanks to Karl Chapek in Rosum's Universal Robot, a thought-provoking play that introduced the term robot to the world, explored themes of artificial intelligence, human identity, and the consequences of creating life. We had also discussed something written by Mary Shelley, if you can remember what it is. Yes, it is Frankenstein. This was also a commentary on the idea of uh, wanting to play the god, creating life out of death or resurrecting dead human beings. The Bed Bug by Vladimir Mayakovsky, a sleeper wakes from his frozen state to a socialist utopia. There are no vices like smoking, drinking, etc. in that socialist utopia. So what happens is that the sleeper is a misfit. Of course, he has woken up and he cannot smoke, he cannot drink because when he was alive, smoking and drinking was perfectly normal. But in this utopia, smoking and drinking, utopia again, remember, good place. In this utopia, smoking and drinking and all sorts of addiction are considered bad. So this person wakes up and finds that the world he thought was around him is gone, is there no more. So what happens is that people catch him and put him in a zoo. That look, this is a person who is still addicted. You know what is addiction? Look at him. It's very interesting. The Bath House by Vladimir Mayakovsky. An inventor invents the time machine. Phosphorescent women come from the future and invites people with at least one virtue. So women who are glowing throughout the body they come through the time machine into this particular uh, inventor's life and they say that the future is very bright come with us everybody is so happy everybody wants to go with them but then the first fluorescent women they put a condition that you can only go with us if you have at least one virtue very you know satirically very ironically the inventor is thrown out because of the destruction he has pioneered in his lifetime. So the inventor who has actually invented the time machine, he is not allowed to travel because he had no virtue. Because he was a science enthusiast, he had no humanity in himself, he could go to any extent to prove science. That is what the play is all about. The play is trying to tell us that if you are too ambitious about science, if you do not know where to stop, someday you are going to lose the battle and you will be a monster. Marjorie Prime by Jordan Harrison. It is again one of the most famous plays of science fiction. A poignant exploration of memory, loss and the ethics of using AI to recreate deceased loved ones raises questions about the nature of identity and the complexities of human relationship. Marjorie Prime is actually uh, one of the influential works uh, which went on to become Clara and the Sun. This is a novel which is very recently published that is 2021 written by Kazuo Ishiguro. This is exactly what happens in Clara and the Sun, that Clara is an artificial friend, artificial friend to a dying child, a very weak child. 
that child uh, the mother has brought or bought the artificial friend to learn everything about the child so one day when the child dies uh, this particular artificial intelligent uh, being will be able to exactly copy her her consciousness that is clara's consciousness which has exactly copied uh, the child's consciousness will be then transferred into an artificial body resembling the child it's a very fantastic concept so that concept comes from marjorie prime constellations by nick payne a mesmerizing love story that delves into the multiverse theory and the possibilities of alternate realities the play explores free will destiny and the interconnectedness of the universe the children by lucy kirkwood set in a post apocalyptic world the play follows three retired scientists grappling with guilt and responsibility a compelling exploration of environmental themes and the legacy of human actions so first of all when we come to constellation the movie that we remember is the multiverse of madness it's a again an avenger series movie uh, starring the superhero doctor strange there are multiple movies there are multiple movies like that like, for example spider-man the latest spider-man movie it also uh, goes on with the themes of multiverse that there are multiple universes and villains are coming from all universes so whenever you consider that kind of parallel reality you must remember nick payne's constellations right the children again by lucy kirkwood this is a post apocalyptic world that is the apocalypse had already taken place the world has been destroyed human civilization has been tried to be wiped out everything over there is chaos mayhem follows three retired scientists they these scientists are retired they are grappling with guilt and responsibility they think that the apocalypse that has just taken place is their fault black mirror san junipero by charlie brooker adapted from the tv series black mirror if you are not familiar with the tv series black mirror you must go and watch this black mirror bandersnatch we have already discussed bandersnatch in a previous lecture so no need of taking it further but you must watch it in order to understand many concepts of reality this stage play explores virtual reality and this afterlife a moving tale of love and acceptance set in a digital world spill by lei fondakowski a documentary style play based on the deep water horizon oil spill disaster in 2011 explores the human environmental and ethical implications of corporate negligence so if the corporate begins to neglect the kind of destruction they are heaving on this planet then what are the consequences deep water oil spills when there is oil in the water the fish the creatures they cannot breathe so if there is an oil spill at the bottom of the ocean it will take years to come to the surface and by that time it will have killed so many animals uh, creatures which are living in in the deep sea area thereby disturbing the entire ecosystem now we are moving on to the last penultimate slide which is quiz time think and answer what do you understand by poetry this is up to you you have to write in your own words you have to have the vision you have to understand what you have been reading as poetry what are the things that you like about poetry dislike about poetry what are the features in the poetry that you have read why am i asking you to do so because then only you will be able to connect the concept of one to the other if there is no clarity of concepts of science fiction and poetry gelling the two uh, 
kind of blending the two will be difficult for any learner. How does science fiction and poetry combine? What are the common themes found in science fiction poetry? This is something you can just go back to the slides and have a look. You will find that we have discussed a lot of anthologies, poets and books of poetry. You can easily uh, write down the themes one by one and uh, answer this question accordingly. Name some prominent science fiction poets and playwrights. It's only a memory test. What are the issues addressed in science fiction plays? So just have a look at the science fiction plays that we have been discussing. Are there any issues that you find familiar in this modern world? Discuss it in your own words. Name some societies and associations that are involved in encouraging composition of science fiction poetry and staging of science fiction plays. The association that we were talking about, you can write their name. You can also go on Google and look for other smaller societies. Doesn't matter whether it is big or whether it is small. But these associations, societies and communities help the entire discourse of science fiction to keep up with higher academic standards. Do you believe there are any aspects of real world society that could be considered dystopian? Why? So in the science fiction poetry and in the science fiction plays, do you find dystopian elements? You can answer that in this part. Discuss some movies or web series that you have come across which have elements of play and poetry blended in a science fiction environment. Let me remind you that while we were discussing Westland, we had this uh, idea that uh, Abernathy was quoting Shakespeare, some other people were quoting Shakespeare because every time they are quoting Shakespeare, we know that they are going to do something which is not a part of the code. A computer cannot write or compose poetry till now, like that of Shakespeare. Discuss Edwin Morgan's poems reflecting themes of science fiction. So we have Instamatic on the Moon, we have a Particle Poem, also we have the poem of the uh, Thoughts of a uh, Module. Before that, the computer's first Christmas card, it is followed by the computer's second Christmas card. It is easily available on the internet, you can just go and have a look at it. Lastly, this question we have, what according to Susan Hagen Elgin can be modes of understanding science fiction poetry? In the very preliminary sites, you will go and see that we have already discussed this concept that it must have a scientific background, sci-fi background, that uh, uh, which roughly means that the realities uh, that are will be expressed will be different from the realities we are having. So alternate realities are a very important part and also the scientific background is there and uh, finally there will be some element of estrangement we will not be able to connect with those elements that is strange estrangement we will i'm writing the word again for you that we will not be able to connect with that poem so this estrangement will finally lead us to a bigger understanding at the end but that is a different concept altogether just go and have a look at that if you require further help or references here is another slide for you this is exactly uh, if you just go to the uh, google scholar it's a search engine actually google scholar is a search engine you go over there and you type the science fiction poetry handbook you will get the handbook and there you will get all the details of the poems and the poet elgin that is suzette hedden elgin all right so Moving on to the reference section, uh, Elgin Suzette Hayden, you will find this book available as I have mentioned already. This is the website that we were discussing. Remembering the future, Edwin Morgan's science fiction poetry. Edwin Morgan is a wonderful poet, you have already seen that. John Russell's Computer Error Voices and Translation in Edwin Morgan's Science Fiction Poetry, University of Edinburgh. This is also a very helpful source of information. SF Poetry. This is the poetry website for the association we were talking about. You will get all the related information related to the science fiction, poetry and plays. 
I hope we have discussed a very difficult and different uh, point over here before which we could not have imagined that this kind of situation uh, in literary circle is going on. I hope you will carry the word forward and people will get to know more about this kind of literature. Thank you very much for watching this lecture. See you next time.